This is the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and it was first announced of course during the impact event that happened on the 5th of August and obviously within that announcement itself there are a lot more other devices that were announced but this Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is obviously the main highlight of the event and I've been using it for about nearly two weeks right now and I do have quite a lot of things to say about this phone because it does have its own significant changes compared to its previous generation of Galaxy Note smartphones and this is going to be a long review so grab your drinks, grab your snacks because there's just a lot to talk about. So for this review, I'm going to break it down to a total of 7 different points instead of our usual 6 because the S Pen really does deserve its own section. And if you want to watch our unboxing experience of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, click at the top right corner there because we also use one of Samsung's special gift to us which is just a backdrop box. And thanks Samsung for providing the box because um, my background at home is just not really that pretty. Okay, so let's start off with the design of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. First and foremost, I really do appreciate that Samsung is trying something entirely new which is matte finish. So this is the Mystic Bronze color because everything else is also available in Mystic Bronze except for the larger watch tree. Uh, the Mystic Bronze color right here is just a bit pinkish. So I was not wrong during that briefing, it does appear as a little bit pinkish under certain lighting condition. And this matte finish is something that I kind of involuntarily touch it a lot without realizing because it's just really fun to touch. But for whatever reason, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is only available in matte finish for the Mystic Bronze color variant. If you're picking up the Mystic Black or the Mystic White color variants, it won't be in matte finish but instead in the traditional glossy finish. Um, just make everything matte, Samsung, please. And in the meantime, please also bring the Mystic Green color from the Galaxy Note 20 regular into the Note 20 Ultra because the Mystic Green is just, it's my personal favorite color and I'm sure that a lot of people will appreciate that option as well. And one of the comments everyone makes whenever they pick up the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is that huge camera bump. Actually, if you look at it objectively, it's not really that thick because the camera bump, the total size of it here is actually more or less the same as the Galaxy S20 Ultra. The reason why everyone perceived it as bigger is because this phone is slimmer than the Galaxy S20 Ultra which comes in at only 8.1mm thin whereas the S20 Ultra is at 8.8mm thick and it will eventually be relevant later. And nonetheless, the huge camera bump is definitely something that you need to get used to or just slap a case on it. And Samsung also made two new transparent cases for the Galaxy Note 20 to show off the special color and also this matte finish that you have on the phone. And also maybe because of this huge camera bump, Samsung moved the S Pen from the right side to the left side. Not much of a big deal, it's definitely something that you need to get used to. And throughout my usage, I just find it to be same as usual. And one notable difference between this generation of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra compared to the previous generation of Note 10 series of smartphones is where the volume rocker is located. Now, it has been moved to the right side just above the power button which I think that's a good thing. I don't know, it's just something that you need to get used to. Personal preference. And okay, now let's talk about the screen. Okay, so the screen on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is definitely going to be one of the most beautiful screen on a smartphone yet. The edge curvature here is very aggressive. I would say it just tapers down real quick like the Galaxy S20 series of smartphones that we've seen earlier this year because that absolutely solves the palm rejection issue that we've been having for years with those much more smoother curvatures at the side. And this is a change that everyone liked. And also, Samsung reduced the bezels to become really, really thin this time around. There's virtually zero bezels around both sides and the top and bottom chins are just very, very tiny. And mind you, this is a 6.9 inch screen and for me personally, I don't even realize that it's that big because the bezels are just that thin and it just feels like um, 
very near bezel-less phone screen right here and I just really like this whole design of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra this year. And the screen that Samsung used for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is more or less the same as the S20 series which is the Dynamic AMOLED 2X screen which gives off magnificent colors, brighter under broad daylight as well and it can go up to 120Hz at 1080p resolution or 16Hz at 1440p which is the same case as the Galaxy S20 Ultra as well. And uh, in this time around, 120Hz does make a difference when you are trying to use the S Pen, which again, we'll go more into that later. And I think that the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is the first ever smartphone to utilize LTPO backplane. So what this means is that this phone, the screen will have a variable refresh rate, so it can go all the way down to 1Hz refresh rate. And that is important if you are using some feature like uh, always on display, which in turn actually saves your battery life over the long run. And let's not forget the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is also covered in the brand new Corning Gorilla Glass Victus. They are using this Gorilla Glass Victus on both the front and the back of the phone, whereas the camera here is protected by the Corning Gorilla Glass 6. And let's talk about our next point, which is software. So the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra comes with Android 10 with Samsung's One UI 2.5. And at this point in time, I think you guys already know how much I really like Samsung's One UI, right? Um, clean UI, very beautiful and also very functional at the same time. And obviously, I do like all of the utilities that come inside One UI itself, particularly both Samsung Pay and also the Edge panel as well. So the Edge panel actually got quite a bit of an interface update this time around. Nothing too major or anything too drastic this time around. The buttons have just been moved towards the center of the screen, which is lower than before. And that is to make it much more easier to access with just one hand. And one of the new features that Samsung included here is the ability to use Samsung DeX wirelessly. So you just pull down to the quick settings panel there, tap on Samsung DeX and then it will immediately search for the nearby devices that are compatible with Samsung DeX wireless. So you just tap on that TV because we are using a TV right here and then it will automatically just pair to that TV and use Samsung DeX on that big screen. So Samsung actually just utilizes Miracast to use Samsung DeX wirelessly. And granted, our experience with wireless Samsung DeX is kind of smooth here because we are already using Wi-Fi 6 at 5 GHz network, which is the highest bandwidth possible at the current day through Wi-Fi. And another big software update that is found on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is actually the Samsung Notes app. So this Samsung Notes app can do a few new things. So firstly is to straighten up your writing. So for me personally, whenever I write on a phone like this, I will always tend to just write a bit sideways because I got more leverage on my wrist here to rest so that I can write properly. So whenever I finish writing and I have to look at my phone to read back what I wrote, I have to do it like this, which is just weird. So now there's one button to just tap on that and then it will straighten your writing to make it more readable in a vertical form. And secondly, which I think is the coolest brand new addition to the Samsung Notes app is something called audio bookmarking. And I think it's kind of difficult for me to explain so I'll just show you this video anyway. Okay class, so today our objective here is to show you how you can get sign 45 degrees equals to 1 over square root of 2. And then according to Pythagoras theorem, this one will be square root of 2. Sine 45 is equals to 1 over square root of 2 because opposite over hypotenuse gives you this. It's rewind time. So this is nice is equals to 45 degrees because both of these sides triangle like this. One right angle here, both of these. So, what you need to do is to draw a triangle like this. And oh, by the way, I didn't realize that Samsung's ability to detect writings is so accurate. And I have a really bad habit of writing the word like button with the double T in the word itself. I kind of draw a hash sign there to indicate as a double T. And Samsung, you did a good job in detecting my weird habit of writing double T's.
And the Samsung Notes app is also having the ability to sync with Microsoft's OneNote and Outlook. But this feature is only coming in November of 2020 according to their website. Okay, and now the S Pen. So the biggest update on the S Pen here is going to be its latency. And Samsung claims that it has been gone down all the way to only 9 milliseconds of latency. And I don't know how exactly they achieve this, but I think it works in tandem with the 120Hz refresh rate because when the screen refresh faster, then your drawings will also appear faster. And Samsung also claims that they're using machine learning to predict where your pen is going to move next, which is why they can minimize that delay all the way down to 9 milliseconds. And well, whenever I draw on the screen, it does feel very responsive and I just like it a lot. And one more upgrade that the S Pen got is in Air Actions. Yeah, it's the ability to use your S Pen like a magic wand. You just draw some gestures on the air and then something will happen on the phone. So this time around, Samsung has a total of five different air gestures that are compatible with the phone itself. So essentially, it just means all four directions plus another one more zigzag. So these are the few shortcuts that you can actually customize to either launch an app, do a task or just do whatever you want. And one more feature that I really didn't get to try it on the previous generations of the Galaxy Note series of smartphones is to use the S Pen as a presentation clicker. So when you open up PowerPoint presentation on your phone, you can just take out your S Pen and just, you know, hide it somewhere and then just keep on pressing the button to go to the next slide or the previous slide. And I would say that this feature is worth highlighting right now because of the ability to use that. Samsung Dex wirelessly and you can just cast your entire presentation to the big screen TV and immediately use your pen to do the presentation. It's just very versatile and the whole solution is packed into this one phone. Okay, and next up is the cameras because this is something that I'm personally more interested in but not in the way that you expect it to be. So. The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra now comes with this list of cameras right here and the most important highlight is the brand new laser autofocus that is compatible with the main camera there. It is still using a 108 megapixel camera and it does solve that focusing issue as found on the Galaxy S20 Ultra with that laser autofocus. Remember, laser autofocus literally works at the speed of light which is why it is just so fast to just focus. So as for the picture quality, I would say that for the main camera, it's a pretty typical Samsung story right here. So you get great dynamic range, great colors, and also great clarity. And I did realize that Samsung has toned down some of its sharpness in the pictures, which makes the edges look more soft and natural. And I did take pictures with 108 megapixel as well. And this flower bud right here came out fantastically well. And whenever I view this picture in the 100% size, I can see that the edges are very well defined. It just looks very natural. And also, this is the only other phone that can take 108 megapixel pictures with HDR enabled. And for whatever reason, Samsung still doesn't allow us to use 108 megapixel camera in the Pro Photo mode, which is something that I really wish they allow us to do because that would be something really cool and I think we can take some amazing pictures if we have the ability to use it in manual mode. And as for the night shots, I just took this picture right here with two different modes. So the first one, I'm using fully auto with that AI thing turned on. And this second shot is taken with that dedicated night mode. And honestly, I do think that the default auto mode with that AI thing turned on looks way more better than the dedicated night mode. And I would say that's where Samsung's camera strength is because imagine this this phone you can just double tap on the power button launch the camera app take a picture and then it will immediately look nice and yeah it's just a very good point and shoot camera where you don't have to stand there hold your phone for like about six eight seconds just to take a shot what samsung has created here is just double press take a shot and then you can just move on with your life. And as for the ultra wide angle camera, it's still the same as before as I can take some beautiful shots with it. I don't really use it that much personally, but whenever I do need it, it does take fantastic shots nonetheless. 
And now for the telephoto camera. Well, Samsung didn't push for 100 times this time around, and they're only pushing in for 50 times, which I think is still plentiful. Um, once again, I don't really use the zoom feature that much, but when I do need it, it just takes very nice pictures for me. Like I didn't even realize there's text on the wall that's so far away from me, but it can be captured by the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra's 50 times zoom with readable text. But the one thing that I'm most interested in is the video capability of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So Samsung made an emphasis this time around to make sure to include all of the features like what is found on a professional camera like this one. So what we have here on the pro video mode is the usual manual exposure settings, ISO shutter speed, focus peaking, and all of that good stuff. But now we also have a brand new audio monitoring graph at the bottom left corner, a histogram and also audio source selection with on the fly gain adjustment, which is something that I'm just very handy to have those options on a phone, which once again, I just haven't found any of these smartphones having such a feature built into the camera app. Alright, so hello everyone. Currently, I'm just gonna have a test vlog using the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with the omnidirectional pickup pattern for its microphone via the Pro Video mode. So currently, my desktop is right in front of me. Uh, it's behind the phone, which is recording right now. And uh, it's playing some music from Joaquin Karu or Joaquin Karu. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering up the name, but anyway, this is a sample of this phone with the omnidirectional microphone. And now I have selected the front microphone, which means I think you're supposed to hear all of the audio that's coming from in front of the phone which means you are supposed to hear all of the music that is coming from the speakers that is behind the phone. And now I have selected the rear microphones, which means that you are supposed to hear more of my voice compared to the song coming out from the speaker. And now I have the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra paired to this pair of earphones right here, which is why I would say that you can actually convert any pair of true wireless earbuds that you have as a microphone. The sound quality wouldn't be that good, but well, at least I think you can hear the dog barking in the background also, right? And since Samsung is already including a lot of pro videography tools into the phone itself, maybe in the next generation we'll get some sort of flat color profile as well. And there's also a brand new smooth zoom feature that is found in the pro video mode as well which just means that the zoom is not as jarring when you do the pinch to zoom thing whereas it takes the zoom step by step in a very well smooth manner but actually whenever i tested this feature i didn't find it to be as smooth as i expected because once it goes beyond four times digital zoom mind you it's using the main camera um, anything above four times it starts to become very jittery and then it's like taking each step to go every 0.1 times of zoom which is just kind of distracting in my opinion so if you're going to use this feature either just use it at four times digital zoom maximum or maybe samsung will push up a firmware update to smoothen out this smooth zoom even more and now for the battery life well let's go back and talk about how relatively thin the galaxy note 20 ultra is compared to the s20 ultra so with that 0.7 millimeters of thinness, I can definitely feel in my hands, but that also means that with the S Pen accounted for some space inside the phone, Samsung has to shrink the battery from 5,000 milliamp hour battery that is found in the S20 Ultra to a 4,500 milliamp hour battery in the Note 20 Ultra. And well, that's not really a big deal because Throughout my test, my daily usage, it can still last me for more than 11 hours of use at 1080p 60Hz, which is personally something that I just prefer because I don't really care much about that high refresh rate. But if you do want to run at 120Hz, well, you can still get about 40% left at the end of the day, uh, which is just the same case as the Galaxy S20 Plus, which also has a 4,500mAh battery and running at 120Hz. And as for the charging time, it takes slightly more than an hour to reach from 14 all the way to 100%, which is fast enough for me and for most cases, honestly. 
Okay, and the last point that I want to make here is the performance of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. I'm not really going to pay much attention to its performance because well, at the end of the day, this phone is still going to perform everything that you throw at it even though our unit here is actually using the Exynos 990 chipset. Because, you see, in our benchmark scores, which I'm just gonna briefly show you all of them here, the scores of the Exynos 990 is just below the Snapdragon 865 and 865 Plus, which is still miles ahead of the Huawei's Kirin 990 chipset. So I would say Exynos is posing a really good competition against Qualcomm right here. And let's be real here. If I'm going to buy this phone, I'm not going to run benchmarks every day just to see who get a slightly higher benchmark score. It's like comparing who has a bigger PP and I obviously want a phone that works and works well and it also helps me work at the same time. I'm not going to run benchmarks every single time. And even in our gaming video, which you can check it out at the top right corner there, whatever games that we tried on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, it's going to perform great. And it's still going to be a smooth gaming experience. So what's the big deal between Qualcomm and Exynos? And so the final question is, is the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra worth the price at 5,199 ringgit or 1,299 US dollars? Um, it's quite a difficult question to answer because this phone is obviously expensive. It is definitely not the fastest smartphone in the world right now, but I think that's okay because the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is made with a different focus in mind for productivity and for power users. And if you want the best specs for money and the one that can get you the best benchmark scores, get something like the ROG Phone 3 or the Black Shark 3 Pro instead. So you don't use the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra to compare with those phones because you don't even compare how a fish will be able to climb up a tree against a monkey, right? And the main highlight of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra here is going to be on the word Pro. So it's an all-rounder Pro device, Pro photography, Pro videography, and obviously productivity. So I would suggest that if you're going to get the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and you don't want to get it at the official retail price, well, there are a couple of ways to do that. So firstly, get it with a carrier subsidy because you're going to need a telco plan to use the phone anyway. So might as well get it at a cheaper price when you sign up a contract, right? And secondly, as Dave2D said it, wait for it, simmer for a month or two, and then the price will eventually go down and then buy it at that time instead. You won't get all of the pre-order bonuses and all the free gifts and whatnot, but you do get a lower price. So that's just how things work. And since Samsung promised three generations of system updates, I think we won't be missing out much, even though we are getting this phone in about a month or two later. Because, well, three generations of update is still a very long time. And now the question becomes, if you are coming in from the previous generations of Galaxy Note smartphones, is it worth the upgrade? Well, if you are coming in from the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, I would say not really because the differences aren't really that significant after all. But if you are coming in from the Galaxy Note 9, yes, definitely. The gap is just too huge between the Galaxy Note 9 and also the Note 20 Ultra. So yeah, upgrade all you want. If you don't want to pay the full retail price, do one of the two following methods that we've said earlier. And that's all we have to say about the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This is one of the longest video that I've made and well, I really do like this phone a lot. And Samsung just bring in the mystic green color for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra because mystic green man, best color ever.